So you want to build an indestructible mind. And chances are you know that the thing that is currently destroying you inside of your life is your mind that seems to be taken away by this constant flickering on social media, this constant nagging about gossip and drama inside of your life, this constant negative self-talk that you have that's stopping you and, and not giving you the courage to do what it is that you want, to, you want to do. So inside of this video series, I'm going to talk about my experience in building an indestructible mind and how I'm going about to keep the most valuable thing, okay, the, the most expensive real estate in the world in here and how you can build it today. So my name is Lin Trin, and in these videos, my channel is dedicated towards the father that actually wants to make some money, but ultimately he doesn't wanna sell his soul to making money. You don't wanna create a prison for yourself. You don't wanna get rich, but you're, you're fat and you're disconnected and you don't have healthy relationships and your, your kids don't love you, your wife doesn't adore you. Money, to me, okay, is a vehicle to actually having options, to give me freedom, flexibility, to be able to be able to do more with the people that mean the most to me. And so this channel is dedicated to you, or more importantly, dedicated to my son, Atlas, who I am creating a knowledge base book of whatever's in here to actually help him take it on. And hopefully he can actually step on my shoulders and build something great off my shoulders and take it one step further. So with that being said, I'm going to be discussing indestructibility inside of the mind. And the number one thing that every man must need in order to grow, in order to build a business, in order to manage a family, in order to like take care of himself. This is the thing. This is the one element that I believe in the first element that takes you from being a boy to a man. It is what is, is it is the singular biggest element that all great leaders in the world have. If you look at any leader, if you look at any business leader, if you look at a person running a $5 million company, a $10 million, a $15 million, a $100 million, the difference between them is their ability to manage this thing, which I call composure. Composure. It's your ability to actually handle situations, okay, without losing your shit. Composure inside of the relationship whether it's me and Kerry, my ability to remain composed amidst the drama, amidst the problems, amidst bullshit bills, amidst, amidst tax bills, amidst mortgage bills, amidst my kids dropping a fucking plate. It can be as simple as that. My ability to remain composed, okay, will dictate the level of trust, the level of comfort, the level of certainty that my family have in me. My ability to re remain composed inside of my, my fucking business. When shit hits the fan, when things are not working, when I have to put out fires, when I've got a hundred different clients pulling me from a hundred different directions, when people hate on me on social media or people hate on you, your ability to remain composed will dictate how successful you become. And I'm not just talking about success in terms of business endeavors, I'm talking about success in terms of every aspect. The best leaders in the world are the leaders that remain composed. If you have a look at the President of the United States, we generally want a person that's relatively composed, that can handle high pressure situations and not lose their shit. And so here the reality is, first part to being building an indestructible mind, the most important part, I believe, and one of the biggest elements, and we're gonna discuss that in this series, is your ability to remain composed. So what is composure? Composure is your ability to take a step back and not get, not get sucked into the drama, okay? Composure is when a trigger happens, when something happens that is completely unexpected, something happens completely out of the blue. Your wife might say, hey, by the way, uh, I need to go and do this thing today and it puts you off your plan. Therefore, you need to look after the kids. Like you, you're getting sideswiped. Your kids may actually go out there and like scratch your car. They might drop a glass and you might lose your shit over them dropping a glass. They might have left the fridge open and now all the food's gone off. Your ability to remain composed means like there's a hurricane and basically it's come in and fucking completely knocked down your house and now you've, you're out without power. Your team members come to you and go, hey, like advertising isn't working. We've, we've lost like 20 grand this week. Sorry, I didn't even see. Your ability to remain composed means like people just quit on you and they fire and they leave you hanging. Your ability to remain composed if clients have invoices and they don't fucking pay and it's a big $20,000 invoice and you're just like, fuck. Your ability to remain composed in situations where the tax man comes along and gives you a tax bill and says, hey, if you don't pay this, you're going to go to jail. So composure is one of the biggest things that actually is going to transition you from a boy to a man. So ideally, the very first thing that you have to understand is you actually have to understand that composure is the first step inside of your mind. When a trigger happens, there's a chemical reaction inside of your mind that fucking forces you down this rabbit hole where you can look and explode. You look and explode because it's like someone threw a fucking bomb at you. It's a, it's a live hand grenade and you're just like, ah, the fuck? Like, I throw that back. Your first reaction, 
A boy's reaction is to go, don't give that shit to me, you lose your shit. And so the step one in my ability to remain in compose is recognizing the trigger, recognizing what the fuck is this like thing that is happening right now. Recognize this chemical change and you have to recognize it in that very moment in time. And like anything, it takes practice. But the very first thing that you have to do if you want to become more composed is bring awareness to the actual trigger. Bring awareness to when you're not being composed. Bring awareness. And so I generally do this. Like when I'm noticing, how I bring awareness is I notice my body change. I notice that I'm breathing different. I notice that I'm clenching my teeth. I notice something in my body. And, and Carrie is so good when she recognizes shit, like something's wrong, energy's off. She's like an energy detector. She's like, hey, what's happening? He's like, he's stiffened up. Okay, there is a clenching that happens inside of my body and possibly yours that creates this level of uncomposure. And it's okay, it's completely normal. And here is where the best part is. You, the second part, what I need to do to, to remain composed is I need to detach myself from the situation. I just need to remove myself. I need a bit of space. I need to remove myself just by changing my thought pattern. Not thinking about that thing anymore, but thinking about my breathing. <sighs> And fucking breaths are sometimes not enough, by the way. Fucking sometimes I need to remove myself from the whole entire situation itself. I need to remove myself from the energy in the room. If something that, if something where, where my wife has said something to piss me off, I, I need a, breathing is not enough. Looking at it, I'm like fixed on that thing. My mind is locked in like a missile, fixed on that thing. And if I don't get my mind off that thing, guess where it's gonna go? It's gonna go down this negative, this self-destructive pathway where I think about all the worst case scenarios where I start to feel all sorry for myself and I think about the worst consequences ever. And that is what we call kind of going down this rabbit hole of self-destruction. Why? Because that's where the mind goes through. That's where, that's your, your natural reaction of fight or flight. When something fucking happens to you, you immediately go down this place where you're trying to, it's a protective mechanism and it's your, it's your default. Now it's actually not going to do anything, any good for you because basically it's there just to protect you. The problem is you'll protect yourself, but you'll blow up everybody around you. Your team members will get destroyed. Your wife will get destroyed. Your kids will get destroyed. No, there is not this thumbs up here. This does not happen. So first and foremost, understand. Like you really have to understand just the reality of the situation. Composure or lack of composure comes from this. You get hit with the trigger and then you fucking go down that rabbit hole and you allow yourself to go down that rabbit hole and then you become a fucking mess. You become angry, you become irritable, no one wants to talk to you, you lose your shit, you become a laughing stock and, and, and it's like, oh my God, what the fuck happened to me? Now. If you are uncomposed, you will not be able to lead your family. You will not be able to lead your kids. Your kids won't respect you. Your wife won't respect you. They will just think, man, this guy's losing it. He can't control his temper. Generally, you'll hear this. Men that can't control their temper have become a laughingstock, become irritable, become unpredictable, become this person that's unreliable. You can't become a self-respected leader. You will not have more inside of your life. It is the one thing that will destroy you, your ability to do this. So, while she get this trigger, and whilst your mind's trying to anchor, whilst it's carrying you on this targeted locked-in missile that you're going down to, to fucking death, self-destruction right now, you have to remove yourself from the situation. You've got, you got to go, right, I'm going to stop this pattern. <sighs> Breathe. Remove yourself from the situation. Go for a quick walk. Just go, hey, I'm going to just remove myself from the situation. Thanks for letting me know. Remove, get out of there, and get, get your headspace back in. The reasons why you want to get your headspace back in, you want to go, hey, we're not going down this. You need to quickly change that navigation route and you need to just breathe and then you need to focus. You need to change your attention. You're focused on something else. You can't be focused on this because the more that you focus on it, the more you give energy. The more you give energy, there's a very high chance that whatever you focus on generally happens. If you focus, like imagine if you're walking on this little tiny beam and then you focus on falling. You go, oh my God, I'm going to fall. And you look out to the side. Guess what happens? Your attention, you look out, you fucking end up falling to the side. If you focus on walking straight along the beam and you go, hey, I'm going to make it and you look straight ahead, there's a very high chance you're going to you're going to make it. And this is the thing. You need to be able to switch your focus. But in that very first step, you have to understand that there's a trigger that happens. You have to understand that there's a natural chemical reaction that forces your body down this rabbit hole of self-destruction. Not because you want to go down this rabbit hole. It's just the coping, the saving mechanism to save yourself. And it's, it's like DNA that's built inside of yourself. For every single person, it's a different level of speed. Okay, if you grew up, with like your parents, your dad cracked the shits immediately. You're going to model that. If you're, you grew up and you had a dad and a mother that was relatively composed, you will remain a little bit more composed. But it's still there. You're along that rabbit hole. Third step, change the focus. Get out of the environment. Get out of the energy. 
okay? We are energy particles. And so the energy that's created in the room, whether or not it's the energy, the tension with your wife, it's the tension with the team members. It's like just tension. You can feel the fucking air. It's hot. It's like burning inside of you. There's ego over there. There's egos flying left, right, and You just need to remove yourself away from that room. Go for a fucking walk. And if all that you did, if all that you did, any time that I have had a fight with Kerry, and there's egos flying in the room. There's fucking tension. She's telling me something and I'm losing my shit. I'm about to lose my shit. I have to go, hey, I'll be back. And the moment I step out of that room, like give me two seconds out of that room. It used to take like an hour. Gotten down to, to five minutes. Gotten down to two seconds. The moment I leave that room, I'm like, all right, cool. We're back. Let's, let's figure this out. Because you just need to cut off that pattern. There's this pattern that's going down the rabbit hole. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I see so many men, so many boys that want to become men, that want to build big shit, that want to lead teams, that want to build big companies, that want to have a great lifestyle, that want to be great parents, that want to have a great relationship, but you can't actually manage your own level of composure. Your composure sucks. Like if someone says something to you, you get completely triggered and then you fucking like bring that energy back into your family. You allow situations outside of your family to come in. You allow family situations come in to sh show up at work. You are absolutely not a professional. But as boys, we all are amateurs. And, and the level by which we succeed is the level of composure that we have. The more composed you become, the more calm you become, the more clear you can think about the positives and the things that you can focus on to get us out of this situation. So the moment that you can switch that, the moment that you can pause that, the moment you can like stop the navigation system taking your mind down this road, you can actually reroute a new navigation system and go, all right, well, holy fuck. I just got a completely hit by the side. I got triggered. Uncle Sam, tax bill. 300,000 fucking dollars. Oh, this isn't fair. This is bullshit. Blah, blah, what are we going to do? We're going to go out of business. I don't have that much money in the bank account. Blah, 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 blah. Right? You go down that rabbit hole where it's completely bad and it's going to fuck up your mind. And if you stay there, you'll drag that energy on and you'll self-destruct. To the man that can go, holy fuck, that was bad. All right, cool. we have this situation. Shit, it's a bad situation. What do we need to do right now to get out of the situation? What are the actions? What are the actions that we need to take? How can we make more money? How can we call up the tax office to fucking negotiate a, a payment plan? How can we actually go out there and get help and negotiate the down payment down? How can we structure the deal a little bit different? How do we generate income right now over the next, you know, over the next seven days to actually get this to pay this off? Fuck, is there an email campaign that I can write that go, oh my God, I got a tax bill and I need to make seven three hundred thousand dollars it's a fucking great campaign you but you can't come up with all this shit if your mind's stuck in the what the missile going down so one of the biggest lessons that i wish and i wish that any boy including my boys including myself is practicing and incre increasing your level of composure and you have to understand that is it is it is a game of practice. It's a game of every anytime you get triggered you pause anytime you get triggered you actually feel into your energy you breathe deep you go <sighs> I'm feeling energy. You are you are perceptive and you are aware. You're not walking around like a fucking NPC losing your shit. Go ah like a little baby having a tantrum. The, you will forever be a, be be a boy. And if you want to become a man, if you want to be a man where your wife respects you, she loves you, she fucking can count on you, she feels certain in you. She no matter what, she knows this is my fucking guy. This is my horse. This is my jockey that I back. If you want kids to go, oh my God, my dad was forever calm. Every dad wants to be that dad that's fucking calm, zen, completely on point. And then the moment that the dad raises the voice, the kids listen, they snap into place. How do you build that? That's earned by building composure. It's not losing your shit every single time at the kids and, and like cracking at them because they, they will take you for a joke. They think you're a complete joke. He just loses his shit every single time. You want your team members to respect you? Get a level of composure. Stop losing your shit at them, right? Take care and take action and protect them. Be the people that actually go, hey, you know what? Hey, you calm down. It's all right. It's all good. We got this. Hey, what problems do you have? Where can I help you? The craziest leaders inside, and I've, I've worked with literally thousands of you know, business people wanting to build business. They fucking, most of them will lose their shit. Most of them will never get in the game of building anything great because the moment problems happen, they blame people. They blame their team. They go, oh, you did this instead of protecting their team, instead of taking on that stress for their team and going, hey, like, I'll absorb the stress for you. Hey, what, what, let's, let's figure out the solution. All your team members need from you is the ability to just absorb that stress and tell them, hey, it's okay. Hey, don't, don't, don't think negatively now. What can we do? Think, get your head straight and be that. The best thing that you could do for your team members is be that person that counsels them, takes away that emotional stress, gets them focused on the right thing, gets them focused on, what can we do now? Where are you at? That's okay. Like, it's not a big deal. They're just scared because they fucked up. 
they're scared of your reaction. And if you react, you actually bring them down this, oh my God, it really happened. The fucking cookie monster's coming out. He's going to blow it at me. I know this because I've fucking done this. I'm purely speaking from experience. And the more I did this, the more I started to go, holy shit, I feel good because I get to tell them off. But they, they perform like shit. Like they completely lose their shit. They have to go off. They spend days kicking themselves down. And I'm just like, okay, well, if I can like surpass that feeling of needing to lose my shit and I, I'm composed, then I can get so much more productivity out. It wasn't until I saw that pattern over and over and over again, I would lose my shit so much. I'd be like, oh, you're so fucking dumb, man. How'd you do that? How the fuck did you fuck this up? And I would make them feel bad because it made me feel good because I wasn't composed. And then I noticed after a period of time, like I like going back, this is purely experience. I noticed after a period of time, there's like three days where they go quiet, cold, fucking not feeling good. They have to get themselves emotionally like in again. And I'm like, this is shit. And then the more you do it, the more you start to recognize, oh my God, I don't want this to happen anymore. I don't want my, my team members to be useless for the next three days. So hey, hold on a second. I, instead of blasting them, I'll be like, hey, it's all right. It's all good. You good? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm good. So what are you worried about? Because they're just worried about you blowing up. So if you're good, they're good. And then you can focus on the solution and get straight away. Get back into maximum productivity. The craziest part is they respect you even more because you're the only person around their life. You're the only one that will remain composed when everyone loses their shit. So I know I've gone on a bit of a rant, but I want to recap this. Step one to building an indestructible mind. Work on your composure. It is a challenge for every boy to transition to becoming a man that can be composed. A boy's not composed. A man's composed. A man's got his shit together. If you're a man, what, what do you think about when we say, hey, you're a man? You're a man. Take on responsibility. You've got this. You are supposed to suffer. It's supposed to be hard, but that's okay. You are a man. You will, you will grow into building and developing your character to be able to handle the stress, the responsibility. What do we usually say to women? You're a woman. Don't worry. You're a woman. I've got you. I'll be strong for you. I'll take over your problems. All right. It's, we, we are like, we'll open the door for you. We'll make everything for you because you're a woman. You're soft. You're nurturing. You have that nurturing mind. You are important for other aspects, but I am a man. I will take on the responsibility. But the reality is right now we live in a world where boys are not men. Boys are little boys. And it's not your ability to fucking fight or anything. That's a test to later on to developing your character. But the very first characteristic you need to cross yourself from boy, from becoming a boy to a man, is your ability to be composed, to not lose your shit. How do you not lose your shit? Identify the triggers. Breathe. Remove yourself from the situation. Shut down that navigation system that goes on to self-destruct. Reroute that navigation into like, hey, like I need to let go of my ego. So we need to, it's, my ego just wants me to feel good. And if you can dissociate yourself from that ego and understand that it's not about you, you can reroute that to the, to the, to the path of where you actually want to go, get everybody on the right path. So welcome to video number one. I know it's a bit of a rant, but more importantly, where in your life are you not composed right now? That you're self-destructing. Where in your relationships? Maybe it's with your wife. Maybe it's with your kids. Maybe it's the moment you fucking like lose a bit of money on ads. Maybe it's like a tax bill that you got and you're like, holy shit, I, 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 this is unfair. All of that shit isn't going to help in any situation. Yes, it's an alert to keep you alive. It is, it is like a great, it is a great tool. And if you use it correctly, it is a great tool that some of the best people use as fuel. They use that as like motivation. They go, hey, like, I don't see the bad in all of this. I, I go, man, I was feeling a bit comfortable. Now I've got this tax bill. Fuck yeah, I'm going to switch it on. And they're so good at switching it back on. They're so good at reframing because they're so composed to reframe the situation. They go, hey, like, what's good about this situation? Well, what's good is if I've got a tax bill, I can write a new email campaign. Okay, if I've got a tax bill, I can pay it off. I don't have to worry about tax a little bit later on. If I've got a tax bill, it means we're making some, some sort of money. Fucking fantastic. It means that I can, if I then pay this off, we have increased our borrowing capacity and loan more money to get into more debt so that we can grow the company faster. There's so many good things about the tax bill, but you have to be able to reframe that. And the people that are so composed reframe that, use that as fuel, and then drive up forward. So that being said, that's all I got for you. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about this video and where you need to improve your composure. Is it with your wife? Is it with your business? Is it with yourself? Is it with your kids? Is it just with people in general? Let me know in the comments down below. Like and share this, by the way, because that will help spread the message. Bye-bye, my friends. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you again in the next video.